Out of speed with him. Oh crap, actually he's pretty nice. Oh yeah. Really on that little speed worm here. Check it out. That's a beautiful bass. It's nice and chunky. Right on. Thanks, buddy. Woo! Oh! <laughs> In the heat of the summer, everybody's gonna tell you, you gotta slow things down. Slow. Drag that worm. You gotta finesse that drop, wacky, shaky, bakey, dingle, dangle, trick worm. Just barely move it. Hey, that's fine if you want the same results that just about everybody else gets. But if you really want to make your summer sizzle, well, you got a need for speed. That's right. Today on Captain's Corner, it's all about the speed worm. Uh oh, there's one. Oh, he just sees it. Speed worm in it. Speed worm, baby. There it is on that speed worm. <laughs> it's on the speed worm, man. It's a bass, though. They're definitely digging this speed worm, though. There is no doubt a rubber worm is one of the all time greatest bass lures. You'll find a pack of rubber worms in just about every angler's box. From pro to Joe, we all fish worms. If I think about it, my very first bass I ever caught on an artificial was caught on a rubber worm. They just flat out work and they have for ages. They're incredibly versatile. They come in a number of shapes, sizes, and styles, and they can be fished effectively in a whole variety of situations. And no doubt, hands down, a Texas rigged rubber worm is a staple when it comes to hot summer fishing. That big tantalizing profile, slowly dragged in front of a big bass, it's gonna get bit if you actually get it in front of a bass. But today on Captain's Corner, I'm gonna show you a great twist on an old favorite by swimming a speed worm. It's my favorite way to cover a lot of ground, find more fish, and turn those lethargic largemouth into active feeders. It's absolutely guaranteed to put some sizzle into your summer. First bass, say, yeah, she's not terrible. <laughs> First one on a speed worm. Holy crap, actually, he's pretty nice. Yeah, my, my big head is He's a lot nicer than I thought he was. Look at that guy. Look how big his head is compared to his body. Oh, yeah. Really, on that little speed worm here. Check it out. So, you know what? That's a beautiful bass. He's going to be close to three pounds. Nice and chunky. Right up in the middle of all this grass stuff. That little hole there, he got it. Right on. Skunk is off the boat in a good way. Thanks, buddy. Woo! Oh! Did you see that? Yeah. <laughs> he came right back out. Nice! My, uh... So what makes a speed worm a speed worm? There's a lot of manufacturers out there that make their own versions of speed worms. A lot of them actually even just call them swimming worms. But the general characteristics are basically the same. The main body of the worm is fairly streamlined. Not a lot of extra ridges or bumps. It's generally a little stiffer and it's not as much action to the body itself. The point to a good speed worm is most, if not all the action, comes from the very end, right there. At the end, you're gonna find a small but very active tail. Some of them have small hook tails. Some of them have boot-shaped paddle tails. And there's even some that have a flat beaver type tail. But they all have this active little tail end that creates a lot of action, a lot of commotion, and a lot of vibration as you crank it through the water. It's that longer profile with that wild thumping tail end that makes it irresistible to bass, no matter how hot and lethargic they are today. There's one. Oh, he feels decent. Oh, he's not, he's not that big. Yes. Wow, look at that. It barely hit. Skin hooked him. <sighs> Chunky, man. Fat, fat, yeah, fat. Speed worm in it. Got him. 
Speed worm, baby. A little better. A little bit better. There it is. On that speed worm. In the grass. You might need to put your speed worm back on. Yeah. The beauty of a speed worm has to be in its simplicity. It has got to be one of the easiest methods to fish an artificial lure. If you can cast, you can fish a speed worm. There are several different ways to rig speed worms, but the most common and probably most effective way is a simple Texas rig. A small bullet nose sinker and a three or four rod extra wide gap hook. That's all you need. It's gonna keep it weedless. Simply Texas rig that speed worm, bury the point of the hook, and there you have it. The simplest and most effective way to rig a speed worm. You don't need a ton of weight here. One eighth of an ounce to one quarter of an ounce is plenty. Just enough weight to give you good distance on your cast and enough to drag that bait down to the bottom. But also light enough to allow you to still be able to burn that bait across the surface when you want to. I always peg my weights when I'm fishing speed worms. With other methods of fishing worms, a free sliding weight can be pretty effective. But with a speed worm, it's not gonna allow it to have the action that you truly want. The speed worms aren't really designed to have a nice flowing little fall. They require a little bit of speed and movement to get that tail to move. So by pegging that weight directly to the top of that worm, it's gonna drag that worm down as it sinks and getting that tail really moving. Making it just as effective on the drop as it is on a steady crank. Simply cast it out, let it sink, and slowly and steadily crank that worm back in. Much like working a spinnerbait. You can alter your retrieve. You can pause it and let it drop. Twitch it up to give it that little extra burst or even hopping it along steadily. But consistently moving that bait is key to keep that tail pumping and calling out those bass. Now you can cover a ton of water quickly and efficiently. Target grass pads, stumps, and laydowns, and even open water. Work it steadily through that cover, feeling it tick through the grass, feeling it bump off of pads and stumps, but waiting for that thump of a bass chomping down as it goes by. <laughs> Wind and grass on the speed worm, man. Just a little guy, though. I think he just had a bunch of grass with him. It's a bass though. A bass is a bass is a bass is a bass. Definitely speed worm in it. God, this one looks like a smallmouth. So fat. He's fat and his markings. Yeah. That looks like a smallmouth. But he is a large mouth. He is a large mouth. Yeah, they're definitely digging this. Speed worm though. Speed worm in this grass was the choice. Pro tip, a speed worm is a deadly flipping lure. Flip it into the pads or holes in matted vegetation, letting that tail thump all the way down and then bringing it all the way back to the top, making that tail dance down and up all the way from bottom to top. That slender profile and hard thumping tail is dynamite to those bass buried up in heavy vegetation. It also works amazing on the top of cover cast it out and burn it back over top of all that cover. That little tail gurgling and popping across the surface can entice some explosive reaction strikes. When it comes to what gear I fish speed worms on, personally, I like to use a seven foot to seven foot three rod in a medium to medium heavy power. Something with a moderate to moderate fast tip. You don't need that fast tip because you're not really working that kind of an action. A moderate to moderate fast tip has that nice little bend that suits those light wire hooks a little better, giving you that big sweeping hook set and pinning those lighter hooks into the bass a little easier. For the most part, you're doing a fairly steady retrieve with this. You don't need the quick action of a fast tip. I like the moderate to moderate fast action. Seven foot to seven foot three, medium to medium heavy, moderate to moderate fast. Makes a great rod for speed worms. 
My favorite setup is this one right here. This is my Cast King Speed Demon Pro 7 foot 3 worm and jig rod. It's a medium heavy rod. It's got that moderate fast action tip to it. I couple that up with a good fast reel. The Bassinator Elite Classic Reel, it's an eight to one gear ratio. I like that fast speed to be able to catch up to any of those bass that are charging towards me, as well as to be able to cover as much ground as possible. That's the whole point of a speed worm, working fast and covering a bunch of ground. The faster I can get it back to me in the boat, the faster I can fire it out and make my next cast. I pretty much stick to straight braid, about a 30 to 40 pound braid. I don't need to go any lighter. You're typically going to be throwing these in and around cover. So I like to know that I have the strength behind my braid to be able to pull that lure and my bass out of that cover if it gets wrapped up in it. But that's just it guys. When it's hot in the summertime like this, the bass don't move as much. It can be a long day of slowly dragging worms to find each one. Why not add a little speed to it, cover more ground and force those lethargic bass to become active feeders. This summer, I recommend putting a little sizzle in your worm game. You're gonna love the results, I guarantee it. Well folks, I really hope you enjoyed this and I hope you learned a little something. If you did, make sure you smash the heck out of that like button and leave a comment on anything else you'd like to see us film out here. We'll do our very best to make a video out of each and every one of those. But most importantly, subscribe to the channel and stay subscribed because there's plenty more coming right here. One last time guys, I'm Captain Mikey signing out. The future is bright. You keep those lines tight.